stage four, day two of the superhero plan, it's gonna be power and it's gonna be tough. I was gonna say it's gonna be good, but tough and good. Tough and good. Yeah. yeah. So first off, we have the box squats and these are gonna be banded. So with the box squats, you have a box to sit down on and it's gonna be shortening the range of motion just slightly, um, you know, depending on the height of the box. We're going a little bit higher with these ones or just going about parallel rather than a hip crease below knee. And we're doing it banded too. So it's adding a little bit more difficulty with accommodating resistance. So with the banded exercise, as you come down to the bottom position in a squat, the bands relax but as you press upwards, the resistance slowly increases as you go up. So it's increasing the energy output and making the exercise a little bit harder, making those muscles work a little bit more. And if you don't have bands available, well, you can just do box squats. So either way, it works really good. So you'll notice with these ones that when you get down in the seated position, you're sitting down, but you're not completely relaxing your muscles. You're keeping them tense, but once you get in that downward position, just pause for a second and then explosively push yourself to the top position. And that's what's really gonna be helping to develop a little extra power. So we got the power cleans next, and this one's a little bit more of a technique heavy exercise, but we're gonna be implementing some of the things we learned in the high pull into this exercise here. So with the power clean, you're starting from the floor. Um, and you're basically kind of get in a deadlift position and you're pulling upwards, slightly extending in the hips. And uh, once you get just about hip level with the bar, you're gonna be explosively extending in the hips, pulling the bar by shrugging, almost acting as you're jumping at the same time, getting on your toes, shrug the bar up, and then you're gonna clean it into position. And then from that, it's the catch which you're catching it, getting in a slight squat position, and then pushing yourself up to the top position, and that's the final position, almost like you'd be doing a front squat. And then from there, you drop the weight back down and start again. So this is a, working a lot in the hips, in the knee extension, and also a lot in your um, traps as well, because you're shrugging that weight up, and what you're doing is you're creating a lot of power and momentum in the bar by explosively um, powering up the bar with your hip extension, basically carrying the bar upwards with the slight shrug and then dipping down under the bar, catching it and then squatting it back up to the top position. So it's just basically a lot in the hips. You have to have a lot of power in those hips, a little bit in the traps to kind of shrug it up to the rest of the way. But what a lot of people make mistake in is they try to pull the bar with their biceps um, by flexing in the elbows. Really, your arms should be pretty straight and relaxed. And once you shrug it up, and extend your hips explosively, you kind of allow that bar just to float upwards and then that's when you catch it into that quarter squat position and then you're done basically after that. So this is gonna take a lot of practice. Thankfully, we do have tutorials in the superhero program to really explain a lot in detail with pictures. And of course, you can always go on um, online and watch the Olympic lifters do it as well because of course they perfect their technique because they do it all the time. But uh, yeah, practice with lighter weight and that way you can really concentrate on getting the movement down and just take your time, be patient with it because it's kind of hard. And uh, yeah, definitely works a lot in that explosive power, which is awesome. You see a lot of athletes do that um, and for a reason too, because it's probably one of the best ones to really build that explosive strength. Got the Openlay rows. Now we've done these quite a few times in the past and really love these ones. Really working on the concentric movement and not working on the eccentric movement, meaning the negative portion of the lift. So it's conventional bent over rows. You'll row the weight up and then slowly bring it back down to the bottom so you get both movements, concentric, eccentric. But this one's really just working on that explosive power, much like the whole stage we're doing is devoted to power. This specific exercise is really dedicated to building that explosive strength because you're starting from the dead position and you're using all of that energy to pull the bar as fast as you can up to the sternum and then just letting it drop so you don't waste any energy on the eccentric movement. But one thing you have to be careful of on this one is don't use your hips. A lot of times you wanna kinda of start pulling with your hips. You really wanna to try to keep it just in your back. Of course, the secondary muscle group will be the rear delts and also the biceps, but really try to pull those shoulders back, get those elbows high, and bring that bar to the sternum. Change just make you feel powerful. It's that mental edge. 
but it also makes the exercise more difficult as well because again, you're gonna be working with a little bit of balance there as the chains are lightly swinging and as they go onto the ground, it's gonna alleviate a little bit of that weight, but as you begin to bring it back up to the top position, the links are gonna come up from the ground and all of a sudden, the weight is going to increase as you're pushing it up. So it's gonna feel heavier because it really is, but it's also an excellent way to vary up the traditional bench press. If you haven't tried it out, you really should give it a shot, it's amazing. And if you don't have chains, you can either do bands or just the traditional bench press. Now that is not easy. As you can tell, I switched from going alternating to bilateral, it alleviated some struts on the shoulders so I could get through the full 60 seconds and that's fine. You're still utilizing the same movement, but doing bilateral makes it a little bit easier and kind of get the hips involved to kind of help with getting through the movement. But yeah, definitely an endurance based exercise and making sure you have a lot of strength in those shoulders. Last exercise can be the med ball side throws. Now with this one, you're utilizing a lot of strength and energy to accelerate the med ball to the side position. So using a lot of the external obliques, the rectus abdominis and the transverse abdominis to really get that you know, sideways um, power and throw there. And obviously the stability of in the standing position, you want a nice wide stance. Now there's a few ways you can do this. You can do it against a very solid wall. Um, You'd want it like brick or concrete where you could really throw it against in that way and it can bounce back and you can keep throwing it against the wall as hard as you can. Or if you have a workout partner, you can do it with them, which is pretty cool because not only you get your side throw, but then they immediately can return it to you with a pretty good amount of force. So you have to decelerate the weight as well as accelerating it. And then you would just switch sides um, for each 15 reps. Or if you don't have that available, you can always just do the Russian twist um, and that would work just as good. Or even let's say like a wood chop on the cable where you're twisting. So there's a lot of variations of this, but the med ball side throw, if you have it available, we would highly recommend it because boom, it's all about power. Day two is in the books. And I think we're both feeling pretty powerful. Yeah. So we'll see you again next time. Day three, stage four, buff dude superhero plan. Yeah. yeah.